It has been said that chess is 99% tactics. Tactics are an essential part of the game, as finding or missing a tactic often is the difference between winning or losing a chess game below master level. However, tactics do not come out of thin air. You usually need to build a strong position by placing your pieces on good squares and having your pieces work together. Positional advantages include having a well-protected king, more control of the center, enjoying greater space and mobility for your pieces, not having badly placed pieces or pieces that do not have a purpose, and having a healthy pawn structure. Let's take a look at some positions and learn how to improve our positional play. In this fairly closed position, there doesn't appear to be a lot of action or chance for tactics. With black to move, it isn't easy to figure out what black should play. When you are in a position where you don't know what to do, one good positional idea is to find your worst place piece and improve it. In this position, which black piece appears to be doing very little? Black's knights protect each other and help control the center, and black's bishop on d6 is well centralized, controlling many key dark squares. What about black's bishop on e8? What is it doing? It's preventing black's rooks from being connected, and it isn't really doing anything. How can black improve this piece and give it a purpose? That's right, bishop to h5. This is a strong positional idea. Black's bishop that was doing less than nothing on e8 is now pinning white's f3 knight to the queen, and it also connects black's rooks. Now that the bishop isn't sitting on e8, a black rook could use that square to enjoy the semi-open e file. After queen to d3, white centralizes the queen, improving its position and unpinning the knight on f3. Notice the queen also attacks black's pawn on f5. Can you see how black can improve a piece and block white's threat of capturing the f5 pawn? If you found knight to e4, great job! Black invades white's territory, placing the knight directly in the center, and also blocks white's queen from threatening the f5 pawn. Notice the f6 square is now available for other pieces to use, and black enjoys a space advantage. One step at a time, black is building a better position. Things are not looking great for black in this position. White has a powerful pawn chain from b2 to e5. White's space advantage is keeping black's pieces passive, and it's hard to find an active plan for black. Notice how white's minor pieces are all pointing at black's king side. The bishop on d3 is an excellent piece, enjoying an open diagonal on b1 to h7, placing serious pressure on black's king side. Compare that bishop to black's light squared bishop. It has very little space and is blocked by its own pawn on d5. Since black's light squared bishop is clearly worse than white's bishop, black plays bishop to a6, removing one of white's best minor pieces for one of black's less active pieces. When you have less space and your pieces are not as good as your opponents, trading pieces can often improve your position. After bishop takes a6, and knight takes a6, black's knight on a6 isn't on a great square, but black has removed a lot of pressure from the king side since there is no longer a light squared bishop attacking the h7 square. Now that black has less to worry about on the king side, black can take time to improve the knight's position on a6. For example, if white attacks the knight with queen e2, where should the knight move? It could move to c7, but it doesn't look very active on that square. Would the knight rather be on c6, where it could put more pressure on white's center? Absolutely! But how can the knight get there? That's right, knight a to b8. Even though retreating the knight to b8 seems wrong, it is a strong plan because once the knight moves to c6, it will be very active. Don't worry about making moves that look bad if the move supports a strong positional plan. Let's take a look at one more position together. In this position, white enjoys a comfortable game. Notice that black has doubled pawns on the c-file, and white's light-squared bishop is pointing at the weak c6 pawn. 
White only has to gain control of the center in complete development to have a good position. One good plan for White is to play d3, opening up the dark squared bishop and preparing the plan c3, d4, taking over the center. You might wonder why waste time with d3 if the plan is to play d4. Why not save a move and play c3 preparing d4? After c3, White is threatening d4, attacking Black's bishop and taking over the center. Every time you push a pawn, you gain control of new squares, but you also lose control of other squares. Since pawns can never move backwards, make sure there are no problems with the space you leave behind. In this case, notice the pawn on c2 protected d3 and b3. And after the pawn moved to c3, there is a big hole on d3. Can you see how black can take advantage of this weak square and prevent d4? Black can play the powerful queen to d3. Taking advantage of the weakness created on d3, preventing d4, and paralyzing white's position. Notice how white's dark squared bishop is particularly bad. Black plans on completing development with bishop d7 in rook a to e8, when all of black's pieces are working together. White's passive, scattered pieces will be no match. Now that you've learned the importance of positional play, it's time to test your skills. 